So if you look at the results, um, this was my initial experience uh, of 100 cases. Obviously, I have done probably triple these numbers, but the first 100 case, and this was at the beginning of my practice, when I got to the first 100 case, one of my residents looked up all the results. And just to give you an idea of what happens to these patients, do they get better? Do they not get better? Whatever. Trigeminal nerve, neuralgia was in 71 patients. And I'm going to now just focus on the trigeminal neuralgia because that was the topic of um, uh, today. 51 had type 1, 13 had type 2, 6 surgery I did for MS in my hun first 100 uh, microvascular decompression. And one patient had atypical. The reason I operated on probably I was, uh, uh, I guess, uh, you know, forced, I have to say, by my neurologist to do something about the patient who they can, they could not fix her, his pain. And I decided to explore and do it. And actually this patient with the atypical facial pain did not improve. So that shows that atypical facial pain should not undergo microvascular decompression. And when you look at the results, you can see that in the 51 patients who had type 1, 47 of them, I had obvious finding of compression, whether artery in 38, vein in 6, artery and vein both in 3. And uh, in, uh, I don't know what is uh, here. Uh, let me just see if I can take that. Um, Two patients had rhizotomy. Rhizotomy means that you cut the lower aspect of the nerve. That's in case I don't find a convincing finding. We got to do something about the nerve. So you can cut the posterior inferior aspect of the nerve with the micro scissors that create a little bit of a trauma to the nerve and alleviate their pain. You only do that if you don't find anything convincing. In the type two patients, those who are less ideal for surgery, I still found 10 obvious finding, four artery, five vein, and in one, both of them. And the three had non-convincing finding. And I always dictate that in my operative report because when I see this patient a few years later, I want to remember, was it convincing or not? So when I mention no convincing finding, I can expect if the patient is not doing well after a few years or a few months, at least I know that, well, yeah, I clearly mentioned that I did not find any convincing finding at surgery. So maybe the problem is not that really. The MS patient, I operated on six MS patients in my first 100, and I had 50% res, uh, good results. So it's a, it's a toss of a coin. You have to think about it. But again, remember, these patients are desperate. They have so much pain that even if you give them 50% chance for pain improvement, they want to do it because 50% is better than zero. Uh, and the only atypical patient I told you I did had a vein compression. Actually, I found a vein compression, but the patient... Uh, did not significantly improve after surgery. And you can see 98% of type 1 had significant improvement. I had three relapse, two reoperation in my first 100 on these patients. And uh, on type 2, 77% improvement. So that clearly shows you that type 1 responds better to surgery than type 2. And in MS, three of them in remission, at least to the last follow-up that I had, 50%, as I said, they did better. Two had temporary improvement, one recurred at six weeks, and one had no change whatsoever. I think, and I do believe, and my results showed that there is a clear correlation between when you have an obvious finding in surgery and response in terms of pain relief. 62 obvious compression found at surgery, 59 out of those 62 had immediate relief. Nine were non convincing. Five still had immediate improvement, and two of them was only temporary. And when we evaluated that, <clears throat> convincing finding was a uh, p-value that was uh, statistically significant for uh, outcome assessment. Age, sex, preoperative duration of symptoms, and uh, whether it was an artery or it was in vein in my series in the first 100 was not associated with um, any um, change in terms of uh, uh, response to treatment. So really convincing finding a surgery was the one that was um, significant. For hemifacial spasm, the results have been excellent. You know, the compression, 92% uh, complete improvement right away after surgery or within the very short-term period. So this is really the, a, a treatment of choice for this uh, disease that can really be socially 
distracting for patient and uh, very annoying. And uh, gross oropharyngeal neuralgia, intractable vertigo, the experience in the 100, you see in the 100 patients that I had, the first 100 MVD, I only had three gross pharyngeal neuralgia and one intractable vertigo. So, you know, the symptoms were pretty good after the treatment, but obviously there are very few number of patients. Complication, there's something that we need to talk about for this surgery, CSF leak, when the incision leaks uh, spinal fluid. Um, hearing loss in one patient I had uh, in the first 100 did not happen after. In the, I can't remember of another patient who had hearing loss. And actually, I don't know why one patient had hearing loss, probably because of a little bit of a retraction on the cochlear nerve or something like that. I had one infection that necessitated a reoperation. Two patients had transient double vision, and that was because some bleeding happened during the surgery. The blood irritated the sixth nerve. They both improved, but they had transient double, uh, double vision for some time. Finally, what I wanted to emphasize for you is first, to know what is trigeminal neuralgia, to be able to distinguish trigeminal neuralgia from other type of pain, to know what are the treatment options for them, and to know that vast majority of patients, even older patients, I have done trigeminal neuralgia surgery with microvascular decompression for 90 plus year old, if they are fit, is the extremely effective and the best choice of treatment with longest duration of uh, pain-free uh, and best clinical outcome in a sense that the patient immediately feels significant improvement. None of the other treatment does that effect. Obviously the injection through the face might, but uh, it's not necessarily uh, a durable. And as I said, it's not my favorite option. And it's good to evaluate the pictures before the surgery to look for convincing compression, because if you see it, then you will find it. Sometimes you don't see it and you still find it, but it's very good and comforting before going to surgery to know that your MRI had shown an area of obvious compression. And uh, with this, I don't want to focus anymore on the hemifacial spasm. There are a little detail about the hemifacial spasm surgery, but I think that's out of the scope of this. And I'm happy to take a few questions if you want. Again, thank you very much and sorry for the trouble at the beginning of the presentation. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.